everybody. It's Bailey with the Million Dollar Etsy shop. Um, I'm here doing another shop critique today with Bugby. Um, so let's get started. All right, so this shop is one of my pretty close friends, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it, but I think it's really good. There's some really good advice for a lot of people and especially for her. Um, this is a unique situation where the jewelry is fantastic. It's unique and beautiful, but the niche is a little too small. And what I mean by that is Etsy works really well when people are trying to find your items, but they don't know who you are. So what I mean by that is keywords that they are typing in. Um, her pieces are beautiful and amazingly unique. And I struggled coming up with some keywords for her, but I did find a few that I'll go over. Um, all right, let's go ahead and dive into a couple of the topics I wanted to talk about. One of them was, so you can see she's using these beetle wings to do some beautiful abstract pieces. They're iridescent. Uh, anyone who's remotely interested in fashion would be interested in these or alternative materials. Um, it's really amazing stuff. So a few of the things I wanted to talk about is hand making pieces that are a bit, let me see real quick, too high competition. So for example, this, I know that she priced this correctly. This piece is a pain in the butt to make. Um, there's a lot of small, smarter, small, 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 small joints, <laughs> small solder joints. Um, her chain may even be handmade, but this is a simple bar necklace, seventy-eight dollars. I know that it took her a very long time to make, and it's priced according to her labor. However, um, I'm going to show you the problem with making pieces like that. Oh, here it's on the main page actually. So here are. Um, Here's Mignon Mignon. She's a huge shop on Etsy who does really well, but she does really well because she can have these things handmade and retail them out at $10 with engraving, with a personalized message. So unless you have the buying power of a huge shop and you can get your prices down and you can do razor thin margins and sell things for that cheap, I wouldn't even try making pieces like that, even though they are fashionable. So this is a knit, this is not a niche. This is a macro concept. Um, I'll even go ahead and show you bar necklace, how many results come back. 87,000. I thought it would have been more, but as you can see, it's dominated by the same kind of style. Yeah, her style is a little different, but she's never going to be able to get on this first page because of the price point. Look, this one's selling for $7. They don't have free shipping, but still, $7. You just, like, you can't compete with that. So I would advise moving away. I mean, they're, they're okay to have in your shop. I'd figure out a cheaper way to make it, maybe as a stacking option with your beetle wing um, necklace so you could have it here as, like, st it styles well with this bar necklace, these two designs, um, here I'll highlight it so you can see this one um, goes well with the bar necklace. Um, but you're going to have a hard time at $80. The second thing I wanted to talk about that is a really good design to keep doing would be these moth and dragonfly wing rings and earrings. However, one glaring issue I have is you haven't used your entire title space and I'm not sure about your tags. I think there's a way to pull it up, but I don't have them right now. Maybe these are your tags. Oh, and you're using short tail tags. So just using brass or bronze, those should go in your materials. They're already going to come up. Um, your tags and your title should be pretty close, but they need to be long tail things. Like, um, let me see. I wrote down a few things for you. Let me put it over here so I can, oops, I'm moving all over the place. Anyways, all right. Um, so one of the things, so insect ring, insect jewelry, um, moth ring, dragonfly ring, dragonfly jewelry, abstract ring, abstract earrings. Those should be in every single one of these listings. Um, and you should just, I, I know that it's messy and it doesn't look good to stuff your title 
but that's how the Etsy algorithm works. Um, you're you're going to have to stuff it until they change it. That's just, I mean, they try telling you to do shorter ones because they know the customer prefers it, but they don't actually prefer it. They prefer the title saying from the stats, this is the reason Etsy's algorithm favors this, is the stats show that stuffed keywords help your item to show up in the search results. So that's just how it works for now. Um, so for this one and a few of the other ones, um, you're going to need to add more keywords. But there's still kind of big niches. Insect jewelry has still had like 40,000 results and stuff, so you're still going to have a hard time. So the reason that I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this shop is I felt like my advice wasn't enough to get you into a big, to become a big shop. And I thought about this for a little bit. Like you can improve it a little bit, but you're not going to completely be able to quit your job and do Etsy unless something major happens. And I think that unless you're driving traffic using, using social media, people are not going to be able to find this beetle and this beetle stuff on their own. But when they see it, I think they're going to buy it. So what my idea was is to drive traffic to your shop using highly sought after concepts. You could still put your own spin on it, but things that are people are looking for. Um, try to figure out how to make it cheap, not cheap, but inexpensively, a good design. I would, I would, this moth ring here, I would throw one bezel set peridot on it, for example, and charge a little bit more. Or you could have an option, you could have the picture with a peridot, and then it would say either $68 without the stone or or $98 with the stone. And that way, you can hit the long tail keyword abstract peridot ring and people will, they are looking for that. Abstract ring is a little bit big of a niche just for this, but abstract peridot ring, that's now you're starting to get into a niche where you can, I think that this ring without changing any design can compete in. Um, same thing with your uh, threaded necklace. It's the same thing. I would, and this twisted branches ring, I would throw a stone on there. And I know that might go against your aesthetic or anything like that, but it, it works. Uh, this this triangle beetle wing necklace and this, oh, this drop earring. Put, put things that people, people are not looking for rutilated quartz. It is beautiful, but they're not typing that in. They are typing in rose quartz. So you do a rose quartz or smoky quartz um, or diamond, even if you want, if you want to have a $250 option um, or however much it would cost, depending on what you, black diamond, something like that. Same design. It, it doesn't change your aesthetic too much, but it's something that people are looking for. Um, let me see what else. The I would not stop the beetle wing, but people are not going to find it unless you drive your own traffic. But when they get in here using those other things, like I mentioned, I do think that they'll purchase it. And you had an ornament somewhere. I don't know where it went. Oh, this isn't your shop. That's why. She has a amazing Christmas ornament. And that's an oversaturated market as well, but I wanted to talk about seasonal items a little bit too because maybe it's under other. Yeah. Look how beautiful this is, guys. This is amazing. So I think, especially at this price point, this is a very reasonable price point for a luxury Christmas ornament. Um, they sell luxury Christmas ornaments at the department store for $200. Like $36 for something handmade is very reasonable. However... I had a really hard, maybe someone can chime in in the comments who sells Christmas ornaments and can help with keywords a little bit. I had trouble finding the right keywords. So I don't know if this will drive traffic, but I think during the holidays, once people get into your store, when you drive traffic with something else, they're going to purchase the crap out of these. Like they're, you're going to sell a lot of these. And I, I wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me if um, you sold a heck of a lot of these in, in person at craft shows because these are just amazing. I can imagine a whole tree covered with these. Definitely, definitely. If you don't want to change your designs, I and you're going to just drive traffic manually, I wouldn't drive traffic to Etsy. Um, their fees are a little bit too high for you to be doing all the work. Um, so if you want to keep these same designs, I would and not change them at all. This is part, part of the reason why I didn't want to, I wasn't sure if I wanted to do this, this episode. Um, 
I would drive traffic to your own dot com. Um, however, I do think it wouldn't surprise me if you didn't have a problem with changing these just a little bit to make them found in the search results. Um, the final tip I have for you is to search the big players in your ma macro niche. So your macro niche would be abstract jewelry, geometric jewelry here, insect jewelry. Those are your macro niches. Find people who are on the first page of the search results. Okay, let's do abstract. And then find people that are in, kind of in your price point, like this guy, okay? And see what he's doing with his, see, see this is a good example of a um, title. There's a lot of stuffed long tail keywords. Figure out why he's using these weird things. Okay, this guy's done a lot of research. Maybe search the search ear sweep, ear crawlers, um, and see how those search. And if there's not a lot of competition, you might want to design a beetle wing ear climber or an ear climber that is your um, cast moth wing. Um, and then there's probably, you know, a hundred other people on this first and second page that are doing similar stuff who you can take keyword inspiration from. I'm not saying copy their designs, don't do that, but this, this is very similar, okay? And he probably has some keywords. And yours is much prettier, in my opinion. So I think if you are able to get to this for, in Photograph better, if you're able to get to this first page, um, you can compete. Even his title's not that great, but look at his shop. Look how many sales he has. He's doing something right. So I would definitely look and figure out, and I'm not sure about these keywords. I wouldn't copy those. Um, this has probably got to the top from other items in his shop performing well. Okay, look, so this is what this guy's doing. He has this design. He's throwing on charms that are searchable so that they, this ring gets pushed up to the top. So what he's doing, he's at a hand or a bird or a feather. So that way his long tail keyword could be abstract feather ring. Right. I know it's kitschy and kind of not very conceptual, but that's kind of like what Etsy favors. Um, so that when someone's looking for a feather ring and they see this, it's exactly what they're looking for. Um, so that's something to consider. Maybe you can be more clever about it so that it goes with your um, aesthetic and concept. But yeah, so I think that's, you know, for, for, for a video that I didn't want to do, there's actually a lot of good information in here. So. I think um, a lot of people will be able to find some um, use out of this video and hopefully, Katie, hopefully I can help you a little bit with this and you're welcome to message me on Facebook or in the YouTube comments if you have any questions about what I said or if anything I said didn't make sense, I'm happy to elaborate and yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks. Um, if anyone else needs a shop critique, I have a little bit of a long list right now, but I'm going to try to hammer them out. Um, message me. I think the easiest thing to do is comment on the YouTube below uh, with your shop name, and I will look at it, and we can go from there. Um, all right. Thanks. Like and subscribe. Bye.